guys. It's a special episode of Fixer Upper. You're not going to want to miss this. We've got bloopers, outtakes. Crazy chip moments, embarrassing chip moments, but also a look back at some of our favorite houses. Stay tuned. You're not going to want to miss this. This could be funny. It's so bad. Yeah, the way they're going to edit it, it's going to be hilarious. After five seasons of Fixer Upper, you've seen a ton of renovations and outtakes. Where's the marker? <laughs> but what you haven't seen is how it all began. If it has anything to do with the house, we do it. This was our first episode of Fixer Upper Chip. We're going back to the very beginning to show you how Fixer Upper got its start. Oh, oh my God. Raise your hand if you want to break some stuff. When it comes to a Fixer Upper. I'll do the uh, heavy lifting. They're a force to be reckoned with. It'd be a good day to stay here and watch Chip work. Making renovation dreams come true. You guys ready to check out your Fixer Upper? Wow! Oh, oh my God! Oh. You guys did awesome. <laughs> You're so amazing. Thank you. Chip and Joe are back. Yes. Originally in the Zan house, the kitchen was partially a breakfast nook and closed off to the rest of the house. It just wasn't practical for my client. So we opened it up, gave them a bigger, more inviting kitchen, but also put some thoughtful details into the design to make it more functional. You know, I tell people when they're designing their kitchen, they don't have to give up function over form. It's really a blend of both. Really thinking practically through your space and how you need it to work for you, but also making sure you incorporate elements that you really love and that are true to your style. I love open concept kitchens. What I like about this space is that it's really a U-shaped kitchen. So you've got your sink here, you turn around, you've got your stove. I really wanted to think through the layout for my clients. When I'm designing a kitchen, I like to design it around the stove. I really like the rock backsplash because it's subtle, but it gives off a lot of texture. The vent hood is cool. It's a stucco vent hood. You know, one of the things that really illustrates the idea of form and function is the idea of this pot filler. I love to incorporate these in all my clients' homes. This shotgun house was honestly one of our favorite projects to work on. There were a ton of challenges. This house was 700 square feet, very tiny space. And even though the footprint of the house is still the same, it feels so much bigger now that we've opened up the space, removed the walls, the ceilings go over 20 feet tall. Right when you walk in, you see this amazing oversized fan. You also see all these really pretty wood windows that start at the floor that go all the way up, so it has a really dramatic look. There's so many unique things to take in. I think that's why we really love this project. Let's go check out the kitchen. In here, we've got a really tight space to work with, but I really wanted to maximize as much of the square footage as we could. There really wasn't any room for a dining table in this space, so I had to think through every design element in the kitchen. I wanted to incorporate this oversized island so you had plenty of bar seats here so they could eat here in the kitchen. Now you've got this kitchen, you've got this amazing living space over here, but it's all open. For the Childers family, downsizing to a smaller home was a chance to clear the clutter and refresh their setting. As for Stacy, she wanted charm, she wanted character, but she also wanted simplicity. My favorite thing about this kitchen is the backsplash. My client loved blue and white, so we found this really fun handmade tile that I think really just sets the stage for this kitchen. I tried to keep everything else very simple so it wasn't overwhelming for her. You know, a lot of people when they're designing their kitchen don't consider open shelving. I think a lot of people are intimidated by it. They wonder, is it gonna make my kitchen seem cluttered? What I love about open shelving is it really gives the kitchen this feel of just an open, airy space. And what I do is keep it very simple. The key is grouping things together, not doing too much color if you have a great backsplash. But if you happen to have a more simple backsplash or no backsplash at all, this is not expensive at all. When designing the living room for the Ferguson family, I created the open concept that they asked for and made distinctive cosmetic updates to the room so it matched their style and their needs. So originally in the space, there were really thin columns and then just some white railing. And I really wanted to beef the columns up, make them more substantial, a little more formal. So we removed the railing altogether to really open up the space and then trimmed out the existing columns. This originally was a set of French doors that led out to the sunroom. Now we've created this double-sided fireplace, put some really pretty quartzite here, and then did a really pretty trim around it to make it have clean but pretty elegant look. Over here with the stairs, you know, they had the dated railing. So we removed the existing railing. We just came back with a really clean, simple railing, but I just think the blend of the white, 
a natural, really pretty wood mixed with the gray trim. You know, it ties in now to the updates of the house. The Downs really wanted an open and welcoming entry. Sometimes in these older homes, there's interesting obstacles you have to overcome. One of the biggest challenges with this project was the layout of this house. Originally, when you walked in, there was a huge fireplace right here in the middle, but you couldn't see the rest of the house. My clients really wanted an open feel. They wanted it light and airy in here, but with that brick structure that was really messing up the flow. So we played around with the design and the layout of this house, and I thought to make a grander entry, it would be really cool to do his or her offices in the front of the house rather than in the back. So as you can see here, I've got her office here. But again, all the same trim work is happening, so there's a really great deal of balance. And then you've got this really pretty light fixture up here that just sets the stage and it really feels warm and inviting. But now you're not walking into a huge structure that's blocking the view. When designing with the coastal theme for the Armoyan project, I didn't want to go too literal with it. So I used simple, thoughtful details to tie it all together and keep the design relaxed and calming, not overwhelming. I really love how quaint and cozy it is in here. The color on the walls I decided to use was a lighter blue gray tone, but it still has that fresh clean way about it. When you're trying to carry on a theme, you can keep it subtle. We have the sand and these really cool hurricane jars, fun little glass things with seashells. My client loves shells, the lamps with the rope, but also this driftwood that we found. Um, here in Waco. It's stuff like this that I think even though we're in Texas, you can still have what you want. Let's check out the master bathroom. I really like this bathroom because it's not overbearing. There's a lot of texture going on and a lot of dimension, but it's not too much. I love these fun pendant lights that we chose, these rotating mirrors. We use a really light palette in here, softer gray on the floor. One of the things I love the most in this bathroom is this new shower that we got for our clients. We've got this really cool basket weave on the wall and then we have these fun pebbles on the floor. We've made their shower twice as big, but with this glass and all this texture, I just really feel like it makes a huge statement in this bathroom. The Zan family home needed a total renovation, but one thing we did not need to fix was the beautiful view. The scenery outside of this home inspired my design throughout the home, especially the main living space. One of the things I love about this room is just how wide open it is and how simple the colors are. There's contrast, but it's really clean because really when you look out every window, there's just a beautiful view and I didn't want what was going on in here competing with what you see outside the window. So as you can see, we trimmed out all the windows and the doors with really over here in the living room. I just really love how it's kind of the anchor of this room. It's really symmetrical. It's clean. It's classic. Again, it focuses on what's beyond these walls, which is the view in the backyard. Come check out the dining room. You know, I was really strategic about where I placed the dining room in this new layout. It's front and center, it's under this really cool chandelier, and then the backdrop is this amazing open kitchen. But what I love about this table is my client said this is where she would eat when she was a little kid at her granddad's table, and so the fact that we got to restore it put it back in this house, I think it was really meaningful to our clients. I really enjoyed working on the Ridley project. It was a chance to transform three rooms into one living space. He really wanted a wide open space to entertain in for friends and family. We ended up eliminating all the walls in this main living space to create a really nice wide open space for him. You know, this used to be the formal living room and now I love that all the walls are gone, it's open up, and this is now his dining area. What's really great about this is he's got these really pretty, nice new windows that look off to the front porch and the front yard. So I think this is just a great setting to entertain family and friends. One of the main things you need to keep in mind when you're designing a wide open space like this is to make sure that the design in each space is consistent with each other since it's all in one room. What I really love about this space in here is that even though now we're in the living room, you've got the concrete hearth that ties in with the countertops, you've got the reclaimed wood that ties in really well with the island and the recessed ceiling. I had to keep in mind what was happening with the kitchen, the dining room, and the entry so that it all felt consistent and there was a really nice flow. 
A fun design element that we incorporated in this modern project were these really simple boxes. What I feel like makes this modern is it's very clean line, it's simple, it's pretty raw, and what I like about it is just the balance of it with the plaster behind it. You can really incorporate this look anywhere, whether it be the living room in this space, for instance, or a kid's bedroom, a playroom. You can think through this on a lot of different levels, even a mudroom, great for storage, but it also can highlight any of your favorite art pieces, your favorite books, so it really can go a long way. What's great about it for any space that you've got, whether you're modern, traditional, or rustic, you can change the idea of these boxes. Keep the concept the same, but change it whether you use reclaimed wood, slatted wood. What's great about this entire concept is you don't have to spend $1,500 on a piece of furniture. This all costs about $150, and it's unique. And as time goes on, you can add to it, take away, modify it. But I think it's interesting enough to really set the space apart.